this is the only video you'll ever need to watch to figure out the perfect note-taking app for engineering students on iPad. Said every YouTuber ever, and then I watched hundreds of those videos. So instead, what we are doing today is taking a look at my note-taking system as an actual engineer, how I balance handwriting versus typing, and which apps I use for each of those tasks. If you're new to the channel, by the way, welcome to the channel. Sadia Khaf here. I'm an actual engineer doing PhD in machine learning and in today's video i want to show you how i take notes both handwritten and typed ones on my ipad here are my four reasons why i bought the cheapest ipad ever reason number one is cheap so it fits a student's budget this is probably the only budget-free model that you have as a student so if you're a student the first good thing about this ipad is that it's very very student budget friendly the reason number two is that it's good enough for most of your tasks you want to take notes you can take notes you want to browse the web you can browse the web you want to read books you can read the books you want to highlight your notes read your research papers create your diagram models, flowcharts, you can do all of that on this iPad and you don't need to go on the higher models, which is my reason number three. The higher models are just an overkill. They have too much processing power. Most of us, we are not creative designs, graphic designers here. We're not doing art and crafts on our iPads. And as engineering students, we are just using iPads mostly for taking notes and for reading books. So the cheapest model is good enough for that. Don't go for anything more expensive than that. And the reason number Number four is that this iPad doesn't actually have much of a downside. The only downside for this iPad is that you have to charge your Apple Pencil like this. Which is a bit of an awkward sort of thing. Uh, I'm sure you already know that. Other than that, there are no downsides to this. And even for the pencil, it did come with a tiny adapter that you can use to charge it with the regular iPad charger. Typing versus handwriting, that is the question. Which one is better? Which one is faster? Which one is more convenient? Which one should you use for different scenarios? Typing is definitely faster. An average person types at about 40 words per minute versus for handwriting, it's about 13 words per minute. So significantly faster if you type things out versus taking your notes by handwriting it. But that's not the only comparison metric. The Journal of Psychological Science conducted many surveys over the years they have published a paper called pen is mightier than the paper there have always been studies that indicated that taking information by typing it just makes your brain take the notes listen to the words and just write them down without really processing the information versus if you're doing handwritten notes then your brain is processing the information much more and since it gets processed more it makes you think about it more and your information retention capability is much more if you have taken handwritten notes for any particular subject so so should you take your notes handwritten or should you type them out? Well, I do both. For things that require me to be faster, I take typed notes. I just type them out on my phone or on my iPad or on my computer. I just type anything that needs me to be quick, like a quick note, quick mental note for some blog post idea or for another YouTube video or for someone asked me a question and I quickly need to write down the information. I just type it out. But for anything that involves learning, like when I'm taking my French classes, when I was taking my PhD courses, when I'm brainstorming ideas for my PhD research papers, anything that requires learning, thinking, information processing, I use handwriting for that. There are four types of notes that I take. I take notes for my French class. So when I go to my French class, I take notes for my lectures, the vocabulary. Sometimes I have PDFs for which I take the notes. Sometimes I scribble some things down on them. So definitely French is a big part for which I take my notes. The second type of notes I take are for the books that I read. They can be both fiction and nonfiction books because I read both. Mostly these days I'm reading nonfiction books. So whenever I'm reading a book, I make book notes. So if there is something I need to 
to highlight in the book if there is some quotation that I like if there is something that I disagree with and I want to write my thoughts about it or if there is something that I want to reuse in a blog post or I got an idea by reading certain section of a book and I want to link my thoughts with that section of the book I take some notes about all these books that I read or listen to that's my second part of my note taking system the third type of notes that I take are for my meetings so anytime I have a meeting with my professor anytime I have meeting or an interview anytime I have a meeting with an editor anytime any kind of meetings I take these meeting notes so sometimes I type them sometimes I take handwritten notes but meeting notes are the third type of notes that I use most frequently the fourth type of notes are for my PhD research for my PhD research I take a lot of notes they are both research paper related notes so when I read a research paper there is a lot that I need to write down about it summarize it highlight it write down the assumptions write down the models write down the good and bad points of the aspect write down anything that I want to reuse again and again in my papers maybe any inspirations from the paper that I want to use in my papers so about all the research papers I make notes I also make notes about my own system models my own derivations so whenever I am working on a paper I need to make some system models I need to make some flowcharts I need to draw my thoughts out some mathematics that I'm just deriving some equations and everything so I take a lot of notes for my PhD I use my iPad, my MacBook and my computer for taking these types of notes and that's where things get complicated because not everything that's available on an iPad is available on a Windows PC so my notes start getting complicated there when I have to use more than one operating system. So here's a system that I've come up with so far. Keeping the cross-platform compatibility in mind, here's how I take my notes. I take two types of quick notes. So anything when I need to jot down a thought which is not going to stay forever there, which is going to find another permanent place when I get back to my desk, goes into my Apple Notes. I quickly just jot down a thought for a blog post idea. It's not even fully formed sentences, just some random keywords, thoughts, a line or two goes into my Apple Notes. The reason I use Apple Notes for that is because I can take notes with my watch, I can take notes with my phone, with my iPad, whatever I have on me. I can take it anywhere I have a thought. I can use my watch to take a quick note and just note it down in my Apple Notes. The other type of quick notes are still quick but slightly less quick. Those are more targeted notes that go into my Notion. So if I'm on my computer and I get an idea that needs to go into a specific place, in Notion I have a quick notes section and I just jot it down there if I want to type it out I just type it on my computer on notion and then later it goes into the relevant sections related to blog posts or YouTube videos or PhD thesis or PhD research papers it just then if, if I have a more defined thought in my head that I know that will go to YouTube or blog or PhD research then I note it down into notion instead of taking a note quickly on the way on the go in Apple notes For my blog posts, I always use Notion. I write these weekly newsletter blog posts that I send out to you guys. And for that, I always use Notion because it's simply the most beautiful, most organized, most aesthetic note-taking app that's out there. So I use Notion for writing down all my blog posts that I send weekly to you guys. The most difficult part of my note-taking system is taking notes for my French class because that's very complicated. Sometimes I have these PDFs that I need in my notes sometimes the teacher hands out the paper notes in class that I need to somehow get into my note-taking system and then scribble down on it sometimes I need to google stuff side by side with it I need to use Google Translate to quickly look up some words and drag and drop their meaning into it so for my French class I use a combination of OneNote with Google Translate on the side so that if I need to quickly check the meaning of some words I can use Google Translate to do that and in OneNote even though it's not a very elegant app I still have the ability to scan the PDFs and put them in OneNote and then uh, take handwritten notes on it because for my French class of course I would never take a typed note in my French class because that way I wouldn't be processing the information enough if I'm just typing it out so I do want to always take handwritten notes for my French class but to do that right now the only app I can use is OneNote because it's available both for Mac and Windows so if I need to revise my notes on Windows I can just open my OneNote and revise my notes there. 
For my meetings and PhD notes also, I'm using OneNote. I hate it. I really don't want to use it in the long term. Besides, my license will expire when I graduate. So I need to move to another app, but I don't really know what would be the best app for me to migrate from. I tried to move all my stuff from OneNote to Notion. It didn't really work because for some reason, Microsoft doesn't really let you export marked up notes into another app. So I'm stuck with OneNote for now. I'm using it for my PhD research. I make flowcharts in it. I make system models in it. I write my derivations in it. My PhD notes are very messy. I only organize the headings and the rest is a whole lot other thing. I, I see all these other engineers showing their notes or all these medical students showing their notes and they are so well organized and so beautiful. There's a highlight there and there's a cloud going on there and there's so much aesthetic going on into it. And then I look at my scribbles and I'm like, hmm, what's wrong with my notes? As an actual engineer, your notes will always be messy because you're brainstorming a lot of stuff. You're not really focused on aesthetics of your notes when you're scribbling down your thoughts for a complicated research paper. So if you've been watching these other YouTubers take very beautiful, very pretty, very aesthetic looking notes, don't get discouraged. If your notes are messy, that means you're actually focused on your PhD research rather than being focused on making your notes look beautiful. And that's very natural because when you're taking notes and you're thinking about some very complicated engineering problem, it's natural that your notes don't look very pretty. By the way, you can't really bite the head off your Apple Pencil. I did it a couple of times and now I think I have a little crack in my pencil. That's my only quarrel with paper notes versus Apple Pencil notes. Maybe they should put like an artificial rubber on top, you know, that, that would be nice. If you like this video, check out this other video where I explain why the budget iPad is actually the best iPad for students. See you next time.